Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I am speaking with Christian Parker. He has just released a fantastic debut album titled Debutante, and I'm super excited to talk to him all about it. Christian, I want to thank you so much for coming on today. How are you doing? I'm doing great, and thank you for having me on, Austin. You're very welcome. We are recording this on release day. You must have a massive weight off your shoulders <laughs> for so much time working on this thing. How are you feeling right now? Uh, relieved, um, excited. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. Uh, we, yeah, it's the first ever album release. Uh, we've released some singles before, but I mean, it's it's different when it's the album. You know, yeah. people get to kind of see the whole uh, the whole art come together. Exactly. Like no, it's yeah, right. Exactly. The singles, it's like the puzzle pieces, but now it's like here you go. Here's everything. Um, exactly. Well, like I mentioned before we started recording, I had the opportunity to listen to it last night and this morning, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, like sincerely. Um, and I also found this to be like, if you're not necessarily into country music or it scares you for whatever reason, this would be a perfect gateway, like entry record, because <laughs> no, seriously, it like it perfectly sort of blends the genres between just like a nice hearty rock and roll with country elements to it and it's what I took away from it um yeah. but the first thing I really want to know about from you and I'll, and I'll shut up is uh what is it about like what are these songs about is it one or is it multiple stories or is it like an overarching theme from start to finish you know, you just touched on something that I'd like to I'd like to address. I was not raised listening to a lot of country. Um, that so yep. I okay. was raised I was raised growing up listening to 60s, 70s, 80s rock. Sure. You know, that <laughs> is what I that's what my parents always had on in the house. Um, that's the music I really gravitated towards. Uh, and whenever I was in, you know, junior high and high school, and we had cover bands, that's kind of what we were playing. It wasn't until I moved to Dallas, Texas for uh, my college, my undergrad at SMU, that I really got introduced to country. And, and it had always been there, you know, I grew up yeah. in Fort Smith, Arkansas, country music is, has a very large presence there. But it wasn't something that I always listened to. Um, so when I got introduced to country, I really gravitated towards the classic country. You know, I liked Waylon Jennings. I like Hank Jr. I like Merle Haggard. I liked Willie. I liked so many of these guys. And I also liked um, you know, the 90s and early 2000s country. I sure. love Toby Keith, stuff like that. Um, so I think you're right. In, in, and I appreciate you saying that yeah. in that in that the the album has a lot of rock influences, but it's also it's also unmistakably country. You know, of course, it, is of a, course. it is a country album. Yeah. But there you can kind of sense maybe, you know, in the way that I sing some of these songs and the arrangements that we did, there is a heavy rock influence. And there's also on some of the tracks, like for example, How to Heal a Broken Heart, there's very much a blues element to that as well and some of the chord progressions we went with and the way we sang it and also just the nature of the lyrics themselves um it, it lends itself to kind of a uh, kind of a blues thing so overall it's you know it's very much southern, totally. southern rock country uh with a little hints of blues um now what was what was the question before no no, no. well listen <laughs> listen i was gonna ask you that anyway so you just okay. checked that off my list so that's perfect okay um, I was going to ask, you know, what is it about? But at the same time, like, I'll, I'll touch on what you just said. I fully agree. Obviously, you're the maker of this music. So what you say goes, but it's, it's what I took away from it is like, it's not just a straight in your face country record where you're listening to, you know, similar ish sounding songs. No, like every song is breathing new life into you. There's sure like there's twists and turns your interest is continually peaked from from start to finish like no song sounds the same and sure. those blues elements that kind of trickle in are so nice and they break up everything else uh yeah loved it so <laughs> the, the original question is is uh are these songs like the meaning behind them is it a series of individual stories or are you sort of doing like concept album overarching theme style? Well, 
I think each one of these songs can stand by themselves, independent of one another, but there is a undercurrent that goes through the entire song. So the word debutante, you know, comes from, uh, it's the French word for debut. I mean, it's it's debut. Um, And in Texas, um, there's a big thing, it's called like the debutante balls. And it's kind right. of like right. where it's typically, well, it's it's young women coming out. That's their introduction to society. It's <laughs> exactly. kind of like said. And so the song, the the lead track off of off of the album, the titular title, Debutante, um, is very much not describing the the white glove, high ball, you know, ballrooms, you know, long gowns, things like that. It's kind of an ironic use of the word, but I liked I liked the word. It's interesting, um, and yeah. and fundamentally, it's an introduction to society. And so, with the debut album, I go, okay, let's do debutante. It's kind of a fun play on words, but also I think if you look at songs like debutante, if you look at songs like I've Been Alive, It's Shotgun, Chasing Headlights, um, there's kind of this sense of you have to take what life gives you and nothing in life is given to you, you know? So if you want to pursue something, you have to commit to it and you have to go and chase it. And that's really what the song Shotgun is about. Um, is you know i think i see my chance gonna take it and uh, i think i've always written music uh, ever since i was little my mom started me on piano in second grade and so uh, the guitar in fourth and then a uh, tuba that's a fun fact played tuba okay starting in seventh grade. <laughs> yeah yeah i did that from seventh grade to my sophomore year of college um and so i've loved writing music i like creating these these things and i like I like discussing it. So it's a good way to talk about kind of complex issues and things like that. And it's also a way for people to express their voices and, and just thoughts and ideas that you may deal with. And not all the songs I've written are great. Uh, most of them are horrible. Um, but luckily, a, a, few of the, a few of them, you know, um, made it on here. Debbie Todd is an is, uh, original song. Uh, Dixie Soul's original song, The Race. His original song, um, and and sorry, I've I've kind of gotten off track a little bit. It's okay, but the but the undercurrent there is stand back, here I come. Um, this is my introduction to the music industry, things like that, and I hope people will resonate to that. And I think it's a universal feeling that a lot of people can relate to, whether it's music, whether it's whatever your career is. You know, we all have hopes and dreams and we all fundamentally understand that they're not just going to come to us. We have to chase them. I love that. Um, obviously, you, you operate as the solo artist Christian Parker, but do you have any outside help putting these songs together? In Absolutely. Terms of like, yeah, I would love to hear like the team that you've got because. Oh, my gosh. I have the world. Yeah, I have <laughs> the world's like... great. Yeah, I have the world's greatest team. Um Let's hear it. As, as you mentioned, I am an independent artist. I don't have a label backing me. Um, I'm only able to do this through the support of you know my friends and family that um, that really pushed me to do that. Um, I have to give a shout out to Sal Oliveri, who is the producer of this album. He took these songs from the demos, which were uh, not the greatest in the world, and and and. Uh, really turn them into the songs that they are now without him he was the guy that got the players on here i mean we have some incredible incredible players yeah on this on this track i mean we have grammy award-winning you know musicians playing on these tracks um, that have toured with some of the biggest names um so they i mean to them goes you know 99 percent of the credit because without them uh, these these songs uh, without Sal without the players these songs would not nearly be you know what they are now um, and, and they're 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 good songs but for the per, the poor vocalist on it too self degrading here you gotta give yourself some credit <laughs> well um, I'm, I'm glad you like it yeah well, um, yeah and then I have a great social media team. And I have um, 
and the photographers and the videographers that did a lot of the behind the scenes stuff sure. documenting yeah. it um they're incredible yeah. and that's uh, awesome it takes a village sometimes but it does it together. does i could I, I can provide you with a full list of <laughs> names and companies and everything that I'm working with, but it's, it's, it's kind of stitch work when you're an independent artist, you Absolutely. know, you're not, it's not provided by the label. You have to cool. go out and find these people and convince them that you're worth working with. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, and luckily I think the people I have around me are some of the best in the industry and, I really like working with them and I'm loyal to them and I, I certainly appreciate it. Very cool. Um, you know, obviously I don't, I don't want to take away the thunder of release day, but I also want to look a little bit down the line. Yeah. Did anything from this record like not make the cut? Like, do you have things like demos that were stashed away that could potentially show up on future records? Maybe something that you'd even want to experiment with in uh, shifting sound in the future. Yeah, so there's a lot of songs that didn't, that didn't make the cut. Okay. Um, these 10 songs that, these 10 songs, um, when you're crafting an album, you have to make sure that these songs all live in the same, you know, realm as one another, such that you're not going from A to Z. And I right. think if you listen to the progression of the album, you can kind of see how all these songs live in the same world. Um, funny you mention it. Uh, we have already... Uh, gone back so I'm in law school right and so I recorded all of I recorded uh, all of debutante before I started law school and then luckily the school where I'm going to Baylor Law operates on the quarter system such that it's nine weeks on and then a couple weeks off for break so in between the summer quarter and the start of the fall quarter I went back to Nashville I uh, back know. with Sal Oliveri uh, the great producer and um, <laughs> we recorded a smaller EP. So we recorded a five song okay. EP and it is much more a story of, it's a five song EP and it deals with five stages of a relationship from meeting someone, being infatuated with them, kind of going through growing together. And then, well, something happens and you don't really know what's wrong but you know something's wrong and you know you eventually uh kind of have it fall apart but those songs i am i am i am i am very very excited about you know the debbie yeah, yeah. Just came out. but i'm also incredibly incredibly excited to release i don't have a title for that ep yet take your time I'm, man <laughs> take you your learn, time you learn so much from i mean debbie tom was the first time i'd really been in a recording booth Sure. You know, and so you learn so much from your first project to your second project. And I really think the, I really think when the, the second EP comes out, um, I think a lot of people are going to say, wow, you know, that's, I, I thought debutante was good, but this, this stuff is really going to be nice. Amazing. That's no, man, the growth, you're always learning something, you're always absorbing knowledge, especially when you surround yourself with people that have been doing it forever. Like, it becomes more of a learning experience rather than just like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to be here working myself. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm actually really happy that you brought that up, though, because I, I wanted to know, like, from start to finish, is there something that stood out to you that surprised you in a sense you say like this is your first time getting in a recording studio I can only sure. imagine maybe the situation was a bit jarring but yeah. something that stood out that you were like why wow, I wasn't expecting that but I'm glad it happened yeah well I'll tell you the most magical thing you know you always hear people talk about you know oh, the magic of Disney or things like <laughs> oh, that yeah. uh, I'm telling you the magic of Disney takes place in the studio where you when the players are recording your tracks yeah and to hear it go from the demo which sometimes i mean it, it it wasn't the case it wasn't the case with any of the demos i did with sal but some sometimes a demo will literally be a voice recording of somebody playing chords on a guitar mm -hmm. and singing and to hear that go from the form that it takes into what will eventually be um, the, the the songs you hear on your phone or wherever you're listening to on the radio, um, it's incredible. And so to watch that 
trend, watch to watch that process takes take place was absolutely breathtaking. The other one um, that I did not know about, and I, if there are any you know uh, artists that that will that have listened that, that, will, that will listen to this, um, you will know exactly what I'm talking about when you get into vocal recording, and you will re-sing the same word 20 or 30 times to make sure that the <laughs> syllable is right. You know, you have a three syllable word. Well, sure. you know, you, you did the first syllable good and your third syllable good, but you, did, you know, the second one we could do better and you will re-sing it. And so by the That's time, wild. you know, for a, for a three minute song, you know, you may sing that three minute song for two to three hours. <sighs> I, th I feel like at that point, it starts to not sound like what you originally sang. You know what I mean? It's like you say the same thing over and over and over, and you're like, is this actually good, or am I just going crazy over here? Like, what is well, happening? Well, you have to trust the process. Of course, you of know. course, of course. But you I just mean like... Um, and, and, and luckily when you have a, when you have a producer as great as Sal Alaveri, it is, it is very easy to trust the process because his track record speaks for itself and i think when we went back and did the uh, and did the ep um this past few months ago in, in august um you know what you're walking into more than what uh, i did you know a, a little or a little over a year ago sure oh man that's hilarious <laughs> at the same time I mean, yeah, I uh, I have not been in a recording studio myself, but I can only imagine just being like, yeah, is this uh, are we done yet at this point? But uh, well, it always gets figure it out. You know, yeah, I love it whenever you know you're on YouTube and you're watching you know your yeah. favorite artist and and you'll see the videos of them you know singing in the in the studio and you're like, oh no no no, that takes place after after that <laughs> song is recorded that's the track they're exactly. just singing over it because what's actually happening before that i don't care if you have the world's greatest voice in the world matter. you're sitting there and you're and and you are going to sing that same three and a half minute song for three hours <laughs> just pulling your hair out oh my goodness um i, I love that it's a fantastic story so obviously you're super busy as you've mentioned finding time for this is impressive on its own but is there any plan for touring or at least playing a limited amount of shows for these songs yeah uh well i would absolutely love to as you mentioned it's kind of hard um i actually have a show coming up hey, there you go. yeah it's, it's going to be the first time i've done any of this new music live um and, the, and I'll actually play some of the unreleased tracks from the new EP too. That'll be November 11th in Dallas um, at the 3202 Commerce Event Center. It's a party that um, my old fraternity, uh, Beta Upsilon Chi, Southern Methodist University Beta Upsilon Chi, <laughs> Mew Chapter. Um, um, <laughs> Shout out. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, they, they, the guys got really behind it and they said, hey, uh, we want to hire you to come and play this music, it's, but it's an open party, so anybody can show yeah. up. So Austin, you can show up. I and could. So I'll, I'll see you November 11th in Dallas, Texas. Seriously, unfortunately, I was in Texas like a week ago. I was in <laughs> Austin for, uh, yeah. for Austin City Limits. Sure. But you know what? I might just have to come back. And if you're watching this and you're in the Dallas area, it looks like you've got your plan set. So yeah. And uh, you can check my website, christianparkermusic.com, for all the details on that. And it'll also be on my socials as well. Awesome. Um, I have a couple more questions for you. Sure. I want to know, um, and, you've, and you've already said a couple things from this, so don't feel too pressured, but we're at the end of the year, basically. I want to know what does the next year of your life look like? It could be personally and it could be professionally. Well, it's hard sometimes because I feel like I always have two competing interests. Um, we've kind of talked about it before, but I'm in law school. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, your it's, life and focus. <laughs> exactly. Sure. Exactly. Um, I, you know, it's sometimes hard to navigate that, but I feel that right now I'm still able to do both. If at any point, 
I, my mom said to me one time, she said, Christian, if you have a number one song, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to drop out of law school and oh, follow that. hundred <laughs> percent. don't have to think about it. And I said, I said to her, I said, mom, I can always go back to law school. Yeah. Um, I can't always have a number one song in the radio. Oh. And at this point, you know, my music is growing, the followings are growing and that's great, but it hasn't become a, the point where it's completely usurped um, sure. my, my, my schoolwork. I'm as far as, you know, what does next year look like? You know, well, there's a train that's about to go, go by, by the way. <laughs> uh, that's the joy, that's the joy of living in Waco, Texas. Lovely. Is, uh, is you get a train that goes right by your apartment. So I apologize for you. All that. good. It's, um, it's a lot more accurate of your location. That's all I don't even worry it about it. It is. It is. Um, as far as the next year is concerned, I expect um, to release this EP and kind of see what happens with that, and and you know start to have some really frank conversations about you know what what do you really want to do you know because I'll have I'll have next summer off and. I plan right now, I've been applying to a bunch of law firms, um, but also I don't, I will never give up music sure. completely. And I would love to get some more shows booked and things like that. And maybe just kind of see what happens because I mean, one of the best ways to grow, you know, digital marketing is incredible. And, and that's how I've, I've grown up to this point. Um, I got some, I got some uh, numbers back the other day that said I had almost you know, 20,000 unique Spotify listeners over the past three months, wow. which is crazy. I yeah. mean, it's, I'm yeah. just, I'm a, I'm a kid from Fort Smith, Arkansas, yeah. you know, nobody knows who Christian Parker is. And yet for some, and what's crazy to me is there's 20,000 unique people out there that did that. And, and, and the, my songs have been streamed almost a hundred, you know, a hundred over 130,000 different times Insane. and seriously and, and and i know to some people you know that's that's not a lot but i think you all when you start from zero and the first song came out shotgun came out in february mm -hmm. and in and uh in, in eight months we're sitting here with you know coming up on one hundred thirty thousand streams and all these different people listening i mean it's it's seriously impressive it's, it's, and it's, it's not it's something little... short yeah don't short change yourself don't it's also, I guess, in the music game, like you're always comparing yourself to others because sure. you see, because you're just, you're subjected to it all. You open your phone and it's all you see, but sure. you're playing your own game. You're doing your own thing and you're going yeah. at your own speed. Also, not to, I would never want to shit talk other people, but at the same time, like you are going to law school. <laughs> like think about all the artists who put all their chips in one basket and they're like, I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to be an, a musician or I'm going to be in a band or whatever it is. Like you've got your backup and you're never going to let that dream die. I don't mean to like give you a pep talk here, but like you're also at the same time, like you're doing your own thing and you're looking out for yourself down the road, which I can say a lot of people don't do for themselves. So I love that. Well, I appreciate that. Uh -huh. I'm just I'm blessed to have a support system around me totally. that allows me that allows me to do that. Absolutely. And, uh, I know a lot of people don't have that, and I'm just so incredibly blessed to have that. Um, well, Christian, my last question for you is basically uh, for the person that is going to discover you from this, and for the person that is going to listen to your music for the first time, what is an opening message that you'd like to say to them? I got into writing music because I wanted to, you want to say things and you want to express yourself and you want your voice to be unique and you want to be heard. I think that's a common human desire is yeah. to want to be heard. I think for anybody that finds Christian Parker, I just hope that they enjoy the music. I hope they think it's different and refreshing and it's not similar to what you really hear on country music radio right now. Oh. And I just hope that if they find it, I hope they like it. And um, 
they know that that is, you know, authentically me. And it's a fantastic answer and a perfect wrapping up point. Christian, I want to sincerely thank you so much again for taking the time. And please let me plug your music for you one last time. Uh, everybody, the album is called Debutante. And we are releasing this on, on release day. Uh, or it's being recorded on release day. But whenever you're watching it or listening to it, give it a spin. We will have links in the article so that you can listen and share and follow along and do all that fun stuff. Um, but it also sounds like there's a ton more coming in the new year. Christian, I wish you the best and I hope to speak soon. Thank you so much again for your time. Thank you, Austin. It was a pleasure. Yeah, man. Have an amazing rest of your day and uh, talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.